Very good morning to all my dear friends. I am Prashant Mauni and I warmly welcome all of you to Study IQ. I hope you all are doing good. Dear friends, uh, the secret uh, for uh, performance or if you want to perform well, then you need to have a good night sleep. It's something like when you wake up and if you find that your smartphone is not fully charged, right? If it is 15% or 20% charged, then you know that it won't be able to survive the whole day in the same way right if you are not having proper rest and proper sleep uh, then same thing is going to happen with you as well the thing is that uh, one of the biggest disease i'm using the word disease here and the biggest disease that i see is smartphones uh, the wrong habit of taking your smartphone in your bed this is the thing that may be taking away a couple of hours of you on daily basis make sure you get rid of that habit or else uh, you don't know uh, the things that you are losing right so a good sleep is a key to a good performance with this dear friends i have a super duper news for all of you particularly for students preparing for upsc exams right uh, dear friends uh, as you know that we don't have even six months uh, to go for upsc's prelims and this is the right time if you ask me this is the perfect time uh, that you should start your preparation for mcqs and when you have Dr. Gaurav Garg, right, explaining you MCQs and providing you MCQs with his video lecture that is going to start from today, 6 p.m., right, to make sure you don't miss it. This is going to be a, you can say, game changer for you for the upcoming 2018's UPSC exam. This is the perfect time if you ask me. And if I were you, right, if I would be in your position, then I would never, ever, never, ever miss any of the lectures of Dr. Gaurav Garg, particularly on UPSC daily MCQs. So make sure that uh, you are present uh, today, 6 p.m., right, and never miss any lecture. This is something, if you ask me personally, then I would reckon this lectures that you should follow it no matter how busy you are. With this, dear friends, uh, Study IQ provides pen drive and tablet courses for various different exams. As you know that we have recently added many new pen drive and tablet courses like test series are there, you have uh, GPSE, you have optional subjects for UPSC. So make sure you check out studyiq.com to find out more about it. Now, the first editorial that we have is pertaining to right to education. Now, we have got this report called Annual Status of Education Report Rural 2017. Now, rural area. What comes in your mind when I say rural education? Do you see big schools? Uh, do you see schools with uh, all those digital technologies and facilities and things like that? The answer is no. I'm not saying that this is not available in all the villages across India. But majority of villages, they don't have this thing. We are still struggling with some basic necessities like benches, uh, electricity, uh, proper toilets and uh, toilets for separate toilets for boys and separate toilet for girls. Then you have this transport facilities, right? So there are many things uh, that still we have to achieve. And uh, see, if you want to make some necessary changes, then you have to start from somewhere, isn't it? And the best thing that we can do, uh, of course, this RTE, that is right to education, is a very important, uh, you can say, act in itself. Uh, it's basically a sort of constitutional guarantee. It's a right of everyone, uh, particularly students who are falling in this age group of 6 to 14. Uh, free education, compulsory education, it is their right. But the thing is that uh, the need of the hour, if you ask me, is that we have to increase this age group, right? Rather than uh, just keeping it at 14, we need to increase it to 18. The reason is that at present, if you see the figures, then 125 million uh, youth of our country, right? Uh, they are not enrolled with formal education and they fall in this bracket of 14 to 18 age group. The other thing is that uh, if you... If you see the education uh, or what we are trying or how things are going on in our country when it comes to education, particularly uh, government as well as uh, government education, you know there are many problems, uh, as I told you, some basic uh, things. Apart from that, we have issue with uh, uh, teachers' quality. 
Uh, we have talked about this thing a couple of uh, weeks ago uh, when it comes to teachers quality there should be periodic review uh, quality testing should be there right they should be inspiring students rather than punishing them so there is a sort of a requirement of re-engineering of our education system and one of the main reason why we are emphasizing too much on education is that education is a thing that can change all the things that are wrong in any society in the world right again I would like to repeat this statement that all the ills that you find in any society in the world right you can change it only with the help of education if you see all the problems corruption and other things right whatever you can name it you will find that all the threads will leave uh, will take you to finally at one point and that is education and what sort of education it's not enough we have witnessed this thing as well and uh, I would like to be a bit blunt here and uh, say that uh, see many of you would be struggling with NCRTs and basic subjects isn't it uh, many of you would be struggling with history now just imagine or just think about this thing not imagine but just think about this thing that you already have finished right to this portion of history uh, in your schools it's fine if you have not uh, read uh, NCRTs of if you are were in a sort of a state level or state level board right uh, or not a national level or NCRT level or whatever but history is you may find a bit of in-depth history in NCRT but uh, all these things that are associated with history um, here and there they have been talked in your other books as well state level books as well then as well uh, we find it uh, very boring or you can say we are still struggling to learn history and there are many things that we feel surprised right when we read and one of the reason is that something has gone wrong with our schooling isn't it so this is the best example that we have rather than we would be doing revision uh, when we say NCRTs or basics we have already cleared basics uh, most of you would have finished your colleges as well, college as well or bachelors or masters as well and then as well if we are struggling with this basic subjects that this clearly means that uh, there is something wrong with our education system I do understand that uh, it's not possible at all to remember each and every chapter that we have learned some 10 years ago but you should be knowing about the gist right so this is uh, one of the most practical examples that I can give you when it comes to the quality of education anyways things are um, we are moving ahead we are trying or we are improving a bit by bit but this can be done uh, in today's world with a pace because of uh, introduction of digital education isn't it and uh, skills are very important just rotting things and mugging things is not going to be enough we need to add skills particularly uh, when we talk about uh, age group between 14 and 18 right uh, they should have something and something practical you know uh, some sort of practical uh, classes uh, that will uh, train them and uh, one thing that we have to keep in mind that we are not seeking uh, to produce machines when I say machines I'm talking about that education should be such that it should be liberating an individual uh, human being right it should it should bring out the best that is there in that person rather than trying to convert him or her into a machine uh, this is very important I can discuss this thing for hours with you uh, but to keep it very simple and uh, to make it very sh uh, short and sweet I would rather say that you know every one of us has something within us right uh, there is a sort of talent that has uh, economical value in the market uh, that will give you a sense of uh, pride and joy as well you will feel a sort of in intrinsic satisfaction uh, but the only problem is that uh, we are not provided with that opportunity uh, or we are not exposed to that environment in which we can identify what is something that we really want to do in our life right uh, so this is a big so this is about changing our attitude towards uh, education right uh, think about it because uh, you find questions on education system or education every year particularly in your UPSC mains examination with this dear friends uh, this one is about Sri Lanka now the president of uh, Sri Lanka Medripala Sirisena he went to a court and uh, basically he went there uh, to 
explain or you can say to get a sort of nod from the Supreme Court that uh, is it okay that he can stay or basically he, he was uh, trying to stay in the office of president uh, for six years now till 2015 right uh, 2015 uh, or you can say before April 2015 uh, in Sri Lanka uh, as per the rules right uh, a president has a term of six years or used to have a term of six years but after April 2015 um, it was uh, cut down by one year so now uh, as per this 19th constitutional amendment five years is the maximum term of this of, of the of, of president's office now the thing is when you go to the court and when you know that uh, this amendment is applicable and when the court turns turns down your plea then what happens is basically you lose your reputation and this is something that has uh, taken place in Sri Lanka with uh, President uh, or you can say Maitri Pala Sirisana. Uh, the other thing is that if you go back in a history then as well we find this sort of uh, things been done by the President of uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, it was Mahinda Rajapaksha and uh, Chandrika Kumar Tunga. Uh, they did uh, something similar, not exactly the same thing but a bit similar. He was opting for a third term and uh, she did a sort of secret voting uh, to continue in office for one more year of course uh, they were kicked out but uh, the thing is uh, why we are discussing this thing because uh, instability in sri lanka is going to impact sark it is going to impact india and its neighborhood policy and uh, we share border water border uh, right tamil Nadu and sri lanka and uh, this government at present is you can say pro india uh, the previous government this mahinda rajapaksha government was pro china and you can say a bit of anti india so we don't want a neighbor who is anti india um, in next election so it is this is the reason why it is important for us uh, with this dear friends uh, taking uh, talking over a law right uh, as you can see now of course when i tell you that what this article is going to be about uh, then you know it very well that uh, the biggest thing that took place in our country is a public or you can say a, what was that a conference right conference of four senior most supreme court judges right uh, we talked about this thing quite a lot of time so i know i i believe that you know the basic uh, issue behind this thing now here this article is talking about entrenched mindset that seeks to maintain public confidence in the judiciary by keeping it insulated from public spotlight discussion and criticism now let me break it break down break it down for you guys see entrenched mindset when we say that supreme court is having entrenched mindset basically you know so far all the decisions most of the decisions that are taken by the supreme court are be are are in are behind the walls or behind the veils right uh, the decision making process is opaque it is not transparent uh, uh, this thing is something that is highlighted by uh, the government of india it is something that is highlighted by many advocates of supreme court and high courts uh, this is something about which uh, many enlightened people you can say intellectuals and uh, you can say active citizens uh, they have also uh, expressed their concerns regarding this opaque nature of uh, of, um, of decision making in supreme court and the supreme court believes or with the help of this or you can say this entrenched mindset um, believes that uh, by keeping public spotlight away by keeping or by not allowing discussion and criticism uh, when it comes to decision making uh, with the help of this thing you maintain public's confidence in the judiciary now if we go back and read this uh, formulation of the constitution the process of the formulation of constitution which is of course given here in this article uh, br ambedkar at that point of time uh, warned that uh, no matter how upright the CJI might be, right? Uh, he could be the best person in the world. He or she could be the best person in the world, right? Ethically, morally, everything, right? Uh, they could be the perfect human being ever. But then as well, we cannot allow CJI to have all the powers, right? 
the whole constitution is designed in such a way that you will find it works on check and balance uh, check and balance is that uh, see if uh, supreme court right uh, judiciary is independent no doubt but if supreme court is doing something that is anti constitution that is against uh, the 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 fundamental nature of our constitution then parliament can take action basically parliament can prepare or make laws making laws is something that is hand is in the hand of parliament but if parliament is coming out with a sort of act or a law that is anti constitution then it is the supreme court right the supreme court can uh, get uh, or it can reject or veto that water this is called a uh, judicial review so this is have check and balance so no one is powerful in our country no prime minister no president right no one is powerful as far as books are concerned in practical term as well at ground level you may not find this uh, all the things that we discuss in the book and constitution and laws and rules and regulation 100 percent applicable but of course at national level uh, you find that uh, generally speaking right uh, most of the times we see that they are uh, followed so supreme court uh, no one is powerful i was saying that uh, no one is powerful it is the constitution that is the supreme authority you can say the most powerful thing when it comes to india is our constitution now as a well-wisher of the judiciary what we can ask uh, for uh, from the supreme court of course the thing is that we have to design a system we have to create or we have to strengthen this institution of supreme court uh, that uh, we don't find any sort of this sort of allegations as well as uh, this sort of uh, you know fingers are pointed towards supreme court uh, we don't need that because people of uh, our country right uh, they have uh, um, you can say they we keep a uh, sort of faith in Supreme Court and it's not uh, uh, just one-way street right Supreme Court has performed very well as well but you know there are always uh, some areas of improvement and uh, this applies with every one of us isn't it in the same way it applies to the Supreme Court as well and this is not a problem if you see it other way then I would see it as an opportunity an opportunity to get rid of all those uh, draconian rules and regulation that we have right uh, so this is a bit of you can say an, an, an opportunity that is that we have uh, in our hand if we grab it and we can take it to take it uh, take the way things are going on altogether to a new level now uh, all the decisions whatever things uh, we are going to do on sorting out this master of rooster thing and cji taking all the decisions we have to ensure that we have to take all the stakeholders on board when i say stakeholders i mean to say even if you and i would like to contribute then our views should be taken into consideration as well right there are systems and mechanisms uh, through which you can do that so this uh, this is very important because we need we need something we need solutions that are out of the box and uh, here this is the thing that i was talking about right in entry 77 of the list one of the seventh schedule of our constitution right uh, this uh, uh, acts pertaining to supreme court can be made by the parliament so keep this thing in mind a bit important here uh, for you guys to Right, keep this thing in your mind and when you are going through the constitution do take this thing into do try to analyze this thing as well right this check and balance thing now this particular article is talking about three it is providing three solutions or antidote you can say through which we can get rid of the problems that are going on in supreme court at present it is talking about this admission appellate and constitutional it is talking it is basically saying that we have to divide our benches or you can say judges or supreme court into three different uh, wings right uh, one is admission one is appellate and the third one is constitutional now this admission will admission bench or you can say admission portion of our supreme court uh, uh, will uh, look after all the special leave petitions under article 136 uh, right uh, uh, to be the first considered it will first come to so any sort of uh, slp special leave petition it will come to this appellate uh, not appellate sorry this admission division and then the admission division will decide whether uh, they should uh, they, it should be moved or it should be sent to this uh, appellate uh, portion or appellate division or not so here it basically works like a 
filter the other thing is uh, then the second portion is uh, your constitution division you know many times we have this uh, we hear this thing in news that constitution bench is going to look after this and that so we should have a sort of permanent constitution bench uh, it should have five senior most uh, uh, judges uh, of supreme court and they should be looking after all those constitutional questions and things right uh, and uh, of course their orders uh, are or their authority that is there should not be any sort of comprom uh, compromise with the authority of this constitution bench it should be as it is at present but the nature should be of uh, uh, it should be of uh, permanent in nature and then you have this appellate division uh, so you can have uh, three judges bench uh, seven we can total have we can in total we can have seven uh, this uh, three judges bench each um, so we can divide this 21 judges in this way and uh, they can uh, go through all these uh, cases that have all these filtered items uh, that have uh, reached uh, to the appellate division uh, from this um, admission division right so in this way we can uh, break down or we can we can improve the whole operation incoming and uh, outgoing or you can say input uh, then you have this process and then you have the final result so we can sort break down this thing in this way uh, right uh, segment it and what are the outcomes that we are going to get from this um, new method this uh, division of supreme court in three different uh, wings we will have more coherent jurisprudence so the quality of justice uh, the second one is more uh, careful contemplation and the third one is that this discretion power of CJI Chief Justice of India we will uh, reduce this discretion power it would be more based on rules and regulations right so there should be a frank public conversation on the judiciary and internal patch up is not going to be enough what we see at present right this uh, uh, news item that I have clubbed here see four Supreme Court judges talk talks with uh, their colleagues now many of their colleagues are saying that we were not taken into confidence before they went to uh, the public or the media and now the thing is even now right that this internal this problem of Supreme Court is dealt internally uh, and uh, the Supreme Court uh, has created a sort of a firewall it does not want uh, anyone else uh, to interfere in this thing it is not in fact interference as we have talked about it so we need a more you can say right uh, public conversation a frank public conversation on judiciary is the need of the hour with this difference this is about tobacco um, India is second largest consumer as well as producer of tobacco now you might have you might be aware about this thing I'm sure you are aware about this thing because when you go to cinema you find advertisement on cigarette and tobacco and other things uh, even in television and uh, with your general observation you know that uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, came out uh, or the government not Supreme Court but the government came out with a rule that 85 percent right a box of say for example a packet of cigarette or a box or whatever right a packet should have tobacco containing packet or tobacco product should have 85 percent of this packet should be covered with pictorial warning that means you have you know the pictures of cancer patients and people who are passing through this pain and operations and other things that normally will stay in your mind for a bit of long period of time right uh, this is one of the main or you can say psychology behind this thing this is something that we have borrowed from other countries and uh, now in UK in USA um, not sure about the USA but Australia Ireland and uh, these are the two countries I'm sure about and uh, what they have done is that you can't even display uh, packet of cigarette right you can't display if uh, you can sell it but uh, it's it won't be I'm, I'm sure you might have visited or have observed or seen a pawn shop or a shop that is selling this uh, cigarettes and other things uh, in our country India right now you know how they decorate this uh, boxes they are on display and um, what happens is that if someone is trying to quit uh, cigarettes and if they see that box or the box of that brand or packet of that brand then it will create a sort of impulse right in them to have one cigarette and then they will stop it this is generally this is something that is observed so to get rid of this impulse or you can say 
a sudden urge uh, this uh, australia and ireland they have decided that uh, your box should not have any sort of brand color or anything it should be a simple plain box no advertisement just the name of the brand that also not that visible and you cannot display it you have to hide it uh, under the counter so if someone asks for a packet of cigarette then you will of course uh, serve that if you have it uh, but uh, you will not display it so this are the rules and uh, in India, what we did is we came out with this 85% warning, which is not bad as well. The intention is right. And Karnataka High Court uh, basically said that uh, this is not right. This is against the freedom of doing business. Uh, but the Supreme Court uh, said that health of a citizen is more, you can say, important than the profits of the cigarette company. So it uh, set aside this order of uh, Karnataka High Court. So, so far, so good. Now, the problem with our country, when I say our country, I mean to say when it comes to tobacco, is that we have multi products or you have many products uh, when it comes to tobacco. You have this uh, cigarettes, uh, you have beadies, you have chewing tobacco, you have cane and that basically is smokeless tobacco. You have uh, this good cars and other uh, things in today's Hindu, the first page. Uh, you find uh, this uh, IPS officers right uh, engaged or dealing with uh, this good cars. Uh, thank God they have uh, been caught. So we have multiple products uh, in our country. As per this, this is I'm sure you know about this thing and uh, this World Health Organization's Global Adult Tobacco Survey that is known as GATS, G-A-T-S, 2016-17 is also talking about this thing so keep this uh, name GATS in your mind right uh, make sure you don't forget it it is a part of World Health Organization you find this sort of uh, things uh, in MCQ too right so this gets is uh, talking about this multiple products and when we compare our market tobacco market with global market then we find that uh, predominantly in global market cigarettes are the things or products uh, that are available right uh, but here we have multiple things and this is one of the main reason uh, why we find uh, cancer is going up tobacco related cancer is uh, going up and up all the time in our country uh, the other thing is that we know that under GST this is a bit important for you as well this all this tobacco uh, products are called uh, they fall under the category of uh, sin good now the thing is uh, GST the highest slab is applicable on cigarettes uh, right and then you have this national calamity contingent duty NCCD and then you have this cess as well but then as well it is not creating that sort of difference in in terms of consumption because this thing is applied this three different sort of tax and two different types of you can say duty one type of duty and one cess is applicable on uh, this cigarettes or uh, you may say this official or branded products right but these BDs and other things they are cheap and uh, they are they are they are very cheap right and if you don't raise the bar of price then this is not going to create any sort of cut down so increase the price and this is a sort of tactic as well with the help of this advertisement we need to increase the price of this product as well uh, BDs and other cheap material should go up and this will uh, gradually uh, create a sort of it it creates right it has it produces or uh, results uh, for sure um, so so this is the thing that is required now this one is about three cheers for civil society basically dom democratic theory holds that citizens have the political competence to participate in political political processes through public debates campaigns non-violent direct action in civil society very easy to understand isn't it every one of us uh, as per democratic theory uh, we have uh, rights and uh, we can take part in uh, all these debates public debates and campaigns as far as they are non-violent right we can take part and this is what civil society is all about now uh, this article is talking about this three young you can say youngsters right uh, uh, that we saw the rise of these three youngsters that uh, they have challenged uh, this Gujarat model of development and particularly you have this uh, person called Jignesh uh, uh, Jignesh uh, has said uh, what uh, his statements are uh, quite uh, you can say 
out of the box as well. When I say out of the box, uh, I mean to say that uh, he is uh, talking or he is touching the right button uh, because uh, he says that caste discrimination uh, can be tackled only when Dalits have access to land and jobs and when they attain self-respect as producers of value. See, the thing is, uh, it is very sad in our country and uh, if you see it from, uh, uh, from outsider's perspective, if you are a foreigner in this country or if you meet some foreigners and if you uh, when they when they come across this thing called caste and division then they, they it many a times they feel uh, quite uh, uh, strange right uh, they feel that uh, you all are politically indians uh, you are following one constitution and then as well people are fighting with each other based on caste and uh, we have talked about this thing I, i'm i'm sure you most of you who are regularly following these lectures, uh, you know that uh, when we talk about caste system or all these agitations that we are seeing in different parts of our country, the basic drive is lack of opportunity, right? lack of livelihood. Observe this thing in the society. A person who is busy uh, with a sort of work, who is earning reasonably good amount of money a person who is selling some products or whatever business right uh, business job profession as far as a person is busy uh, with his or her own life right uh, they won't find uh, this sort of time to come out and vandalize properties and things like that nowadays uh, we are living in a world that you can express your opinion you can you don't have to take a day off and come out in a street and protest right uh, social media can do that thing for you and uh, you can get all the updates and you can share your views and so this is uh, at present this is the time right uh, that we have to change the way we protest the other thing is that uh, marketing right uh, branding and marketing this are the things they are designed in such a way that uh, they will create a sort of impact in your mind for a very long period of time and politicians political parties that uh, they they hire the best uh, uh, in the market best marketers you can say market marketing practitioners uh, of the current time they will they will hire them and uh, the strategies uh, they designed uh, they they do produce results as well now the thing is uh, when we see new voice uh, coming up like i will give you example of hardik patel and this uh, jignesh and there is one more person here so when when they came out with or when they created a sort of ripple uh, in the political um, you can say society political arena of uh, gujarat uh, we saw that uh, there are uh, like hardik patels or some some um, scandal CD was out, right? Uh, so, what we are seeing here is that the competition has uh, gone to such an extent that a personal life of some politician is also, you know, they are uh, they are peeping into their his or her personal life as well, which is not fair. Now, of course, the target was Hardik, but what about the dignity of the lady? No one questioned this thing that how can you project a lady uh, that. It was displayed of course her face was not displayed but you know uh, she would be going through uh, humiliation uh, right uh, so no one questioned this thing because uh, clearly see this was the hidden agenda this is how they play with our mind right they want us to see Hardik and that's what uh, they were successful in doing it uh, so we have to as uh, youngsters right as uh, educated people rather than just believing all the things right I'm, I'm i'm saying you this thing as you know that i do take hindu analysis on regular basis then as well i must say that uh, rather than taking everything uh, as it is right you should always question you should always question the things even if i have said those things in this uh, this analysis right because this will make the best uh, this will bring the best uh, out of you uh, when you question things then you, then you will try to find the answers as well right so so do that thing and this is something that is very important and not only as a citizen but for your preparation as well because if you go through the notification of uh, let's say UPSC then you will find it is clearly written there that a well educated person you should have a reasonably good understanding of the things that are going around right and here as well, uh, this thing applies that uh, just uh, copying and pasting views is not going to help. You have to have your own views. 
and you don't have to worry about how you are going to have your own views as the time will pass by right uh, if you are regular if you are uh, if you are giving all the things that you can then uh, it's not going to be difficult it will automatically happen with you uh, so uh, this is very important so these are basically we have learned i believe many things from this particular article now very quickly let's go through this uh, news item and this article is about usa right uh, USA has decided that it is going to support this Kurdish led border force now here the dots that you can see you can see four countries here Iran Turkey Syria and Iraq uh, this portion here the, this uh, yellow bit uh, you can say this uh, stars or Sun right uh, the, here you find Kurdish population there is a special video lecture available on Kurdistan or referendum so make sure you go through that I have delivered this one in English and Hindi and uh, it will provide you the background and what are the things going on in Kurdistan so do go through it and uh, with this dear friends uh, this is a sort of a picture of uh, Prime Minister of Israel um, his uh, wife as well as uh, Prime Minister of India they are flying kite and this indicates the relationship that we are sharing this is another picture from the road so that took place in Ahmedabad this one is government can can government mandate sharing of biometric data has been asked by supreme court now the supreme court as you know has started hearing 27 petitions against other projects so this is something that we have to observe and let's see what is going to be the final verdict when it comes to other with this is about surge in banking stocks you know that uh, or let me put it this way do you know that BSC index has crossed 35,000 mark for the first time now stock market is something that you don't have to follow if you're preparing for competitive exam but you should know the reason behind it the reason is that the government has decided the government earlier said that it is going to borrow 50,000 uh, from the market but now it has decided that it will borrow just to 20,000 so this is something that has created a positive vibe but terror disrupts us says Susma Swaraj in this uh, Raisina dialogue it is about foreign affairs of India Raisina dialogue and uh, in this dialogue uh, she said that uh, terrorism is the mother of all disruptions these are the words right or these are the things uh, on which you should think about why it is mother of all this uh, disruption this is let's say for example question of the day for you guys right do let me know about your views how it is mother of all disruptions think about it and uh, she also talked about this digital age and radicalization I always say this thing I have coined this term TPO that means terror process outsourcing nowadays what they do is they radicalize youngsters online so they don't uh, have to do anything they just have to provide this sort of uh, orators and material uh, and they will use uh, this ill-informed youngsters and they will misuse them and finally we have this sort of TPO thing going on India needs to focus eastward this has been said by mr. Madhav right he is a minister and uh, uh, basically he said that uh, we should focus on Asia rather than uh, following uh, we, we have a potential right uh, India is uh, having this soft power of culture and civilization link uh, that we should explore he's talking about focusing more on this portion and this portion here with this dear friends uh, Koreans uh, are going to unite this uh, winter Olympics which is which is a good thing right uh, North Korea and South Korea arch rivals they are going to be one be one in the sense uh, that they are going to have a joint women's ice hockey team uh, so this is a good thing this one is an underwater uh, expedition of uh, Mexico's uh, sack Aktun underwater cave system keep this thing in mind just in case if you find a sort of MCQ on this thing the reason is that our specialty is that they are uh, the biggest uh, flooded cave on the planet and uh, this one is a picture of Buskashi a sport uh, a sort of football but that you play on horses uh, so you have uh, fast running horses you have ponies and sturdy horses and all different types of horses It's not that just you use one type of horse right different horses are used in Buskashi in Afghanistan this is about a big bang sale 36 companies 
lined up for strategic sale this investment is the plan of the government and this one is about gst council meeting uh, do go through all the points that are given here of course if i will take you through them then it will take another five minutes so make sure you go through them very easy to understand with this dear friends uh, these are your answers and uh, don't forget to download this file and again I would like to remind all of you about this UPSC daily MCQs right 6 p.m. today don't miss it out I will see you all soon till then enjoy your studies take care Jai Hind